Okay, page two, we're going to do something a little bit different, or something we've not really done before, which is given some requirements, we're going to create a sketch of a function, not necessarily the function, but a function. So sketch a function that meets the following requirements. f of zero equals zero. Well, that one's pretty easy. What does that mean? That means when x is zero, y is zero. It's this one f of 1 is 1. That means when x is 1, y is 1. Also pretty easy. The limit as x approaches 3, not necessarily from the right or from the left, there's nothing there. That means both of them is negative infinity. So that means that at 3 we have some serious domain issues and that at we, as we come at it from the left and the right they're both going to go to negative infinity. So it's going to do something like this. We don't know much more about it at this point, but it does do that. The limit as x approaches negative infinity is 0. So as we go more and more and more to the left, the output is going to be close to zero. So somewhere over here um, it's going to be coming at zero. I don't know if it's coming at zero from below or above, but let's see. come back to that one. And then the last one says f of x is even. So there's a terminology piece there. What is that terminology? Even means that whatever is on this side of the graph, on this side of the axes, must be mirrored to this side of the y-axis. So that means in a sneaky way that there's also an asymptote here, which means that this guy has to go down and this guy has to go down. And that means that as x approaches negative infinity, it goes to zero, but that also means that x approaches positive infinity, it's going towards zero. So we're going to say this way, and we're going to do this way. Okay. That also means that this blue dot, when I input 1, I get 1, and the definition of even is that if I input the opposite of this, I get the same number. So that even means that f of negative 1 is also 1. Oop, so right there. This one's tricky. Look at that. So it looks like we've got kind of a little heart here. So it's going to come up and then come down and join up with this, come up and come down and join with this. Now it looks pretty nice and mirrored across the axis there. Oh, I want to put my arrow on here at the end. Don't want to leave that off. And then we've met all of our domain restrictions. So domain, domain, limit, even, f of 1, and f of 0. So that one's all done. So what are some different domain constraints? One of the things we were talking about at the very beginning of this session was that uh, the domain issues are what create the weird functions or weird components of the function. So we're going to look at this guy on the left and see how it's different than this one on the right. So there's two ways that domain issues can happen. Okay, There's two things. Um, if I know what the value of x is that causes the domain restriction, so if I plug in f of, um, it's the same thing we write earlier, uh, issue number, whatever the number is associated with the issue, so the number with issues, when I plug that in, I'm going to get one of two things. I'm either going to get infinity, over zero, and this is indicative of a vertical asymptote. Okay, So we have one thing that can happen, which is a vertical asymptote. The other thing that can happen is that when we take f of our number with the, that issue number again, number with issues, Instead, I get 0 over 0, and this means that we have a hole. We haven't talked much about those yet, but recognize that 0 over 0, if I plug in that weird number with issues, 
means I'm going to have a hole. Okay, so let's kind of look at this guy. What are my numbers with issues on this guy? In other words, what are my excluded values? So when I look at the domain, what's the value of x that's going to make the domain equal 0? So x can be anything except for negative 2. So all real numbers except negative 2. Okay. So when I plug in that number, what happens? So as x approaches negative 2 from the right, I'm going to get 1 over um, negative 2.00001. Oops, that's not the right. That would be the left. Sorry. We'll do the left first. Plus 2, I'm going to get 1 over a really, really, really small negative number, which means we're going to get a big negative number, which means that this guy, as it comes from the left, is going to do this. Okay. When we come from the right, That would be something more like 1 over negative 1.999 plus 2, which is going to be 1 over a small positive number, which is a big positive. So this guy's going to do something more like that. Okay. Okay, what are our domain restrictions here? Well, before I can make any decisions about what my domain restrictions are here, I have a denominator that's a difference of perfect squares, which means we can rewrite it. x minus 2 over x plus 2 times x minus 2. So my domain is that x can be anything except negative 2 or positive 2. So somewhere along this line negative 2, we're going to have a domain issue. And somewhere along this line, positive 2, we're going to have a domain issue. So we're going to look at how to graph this by coming down here and looking at this first. Hopefully that will clear up a little bit. So come down here and we're going to clarify vertical asymptotes. They show in the function as infinity over 0 when I plug in that value with issues. I'm going to have to close this guy, sorry, and reopen it and hope that that makes a difference. Oh yeah, that's much better. Okay, and it's noted as problem. So this is going to give us um, uh, an uh, uh, asymptote. And we'll have to do x approaches that number from the left. And we'll have to do it from the right. And that's going to help us to figure out how exactly we go about graphing this function. A hole, on the other hand, will be the excluded value. If we plug that in, we're going to get 0 over 0. So here's, <clears throat> here's how we deal with this. 0 over 0. So we're going to come back up to our original problem. We had f of x equals x minus 2 over x plus 2 times x minus 2. So for every value except for except for the value x equals 2, we're going to get the same thing as we would 
if we just graphed 1 over x minus 2. So we should get almost the exact same thing that we did above, right? Almost the exact same thing, which is going to be something like this and something like this. But when I input 2, I would get 0 over 0 if I input it into this original function. So technically, we're always inputting into this original function, but it's easier to calculate if we only look at 1 over x plus 2. So we simplified it. So if I plug in 2 into this, I'm going to be getting close, 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 as close as I can to 1 over 2 plus 2, which is going to be 1 fourth. So I'm going to get closer and closer and closer to 1 fourth. So this right here Sorry guys. Let's see if that makes it a little better. So right here from the left and from the right I'm going to be getting closer and closer and closer to 1 fourth. So if I plugged in 1.99999 I would get 1 over almost 1 fourth and if I plugged in 2.000001 I would get 1 and slightly more than 4 and that would give me a hole there. So as I come at it from the right and the left I'm approaching 1 fourth but I have to leave an empty circle because I can't technically plug in positive 2 into this original function. Okay? We'll talk more about this one in class. If you have a question on this, take a sticky note or somewhere in this area over here, make a note of what your question is so you remember to get it answered when you come to class tomorrow.